What the fuck is Sage doing? Like, I can't believe he's still not here. We'll just fucking go live anyway. Welcome, <laughs> Welcome to Team Forest TV. This is a fully charged episode 27 with admirable Sideshow from behind the curtain. And um, we got John on the camera. You've got my heart racing, Sideshow. Hello there, hello indeed. I'm using the world's slowest laptop right now, so uh, I, I'm not even sure whether what I'm saying is transmuting across the airwaves, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm hyped for this. This is the, the death of the pig in uniform. <laughs> uh, our guest tonight, our Sonny Black ETFTL's head admin, he's going to be giving us his usual sparkling delivery of the awards. <laughs> uh, we've got Kiris, captain of Reason Gaming, as Ebisai here representing Nerd Rage, and I'm sitting at short notice for Hair P, will be representing TLR, but he wasn't man enough to put on his camera. He has a camera, but. He didn't want to turn it on, guys. I need to Twitch chat to coax Amps out of his, his shy shell there. And also, we have Kratos here to represent the top four and Danger Dogs. And the reason we're here, we're going to celebrate the ETFL Season 21 powered by TT Esports. It's the award show, baby. And it's going to be the usual... Uh, Order of business. We'll discuss the nominations, the results. We'll gauge the reactions, and we'll talk about some other stuff. I'm sure. Try and hype things up towards i55. We're going to have another fully charged on Thursday. But let's get things underway. Does anyone have a, a strong urge as to which award we should discuss first, guys? Nobody cares. No, no, no pressing <laughs> concerns. Oh, Nobody wait, wait, cares wait, wait. which one's attacked first. I need you, say to I want a. A little synopsis here, because I'm a big fat phony. I have no idea what happened in the ETF 2L playoffs. Just, you know, give me a little bit of a rundown of what went on right at the end of the season there. Let's have a listen. Uh, a look, even? Not a listen, unless you're listening to a radio cast or something. So it's uh, it's the playoffs. There's three teams. The order of the teams going in was slightly different to the order of the teams going out, but uh, one team that didn't change was Nerdrage. Third place in, third place out. Rest in peace. But they came up against uh, Rees, eventually won it, and they were incredibly close in the semis. Um, I'm not sure of the exact scores. I'm sure the teams remember. But uh, it was super, super close on uh, two maps, but Reason managed to take it. They looked like the stronger team overall. And uh, they went into the semis where they ploughed through a broken husk of TLR and stomped their way to victory. So, yeah, it ended up with Reason looking like a very strong first place. We saw Shockey playing fairly well. It was a very cohesive team. Teamwork was at uh, a maximum for what we've seen from Reason so far, um, even though they haven't played together for very long. Nerd Rage were looking fairly strong. TLR... Um, too good, but we saw from them throughout the season, so I'm uh, I'm not too worried. It it was a good show overall. Let me get some quick reaction from the losers then. Zebasai, how does it feel a week later? Well, uh, it sucks to be third, especially since we feel that we're better than uh, TLR. But uh, it is what it is. It doesn't really matter. Ams, uh, we're happy with second overall. I feel like we put on a better performance in the finals, but. You know, it wasn't that great. So, uh, have you guys discussed what your plans are then moving towards LAN? We've heard that Heist has injured himself. You want to reveal anything about that? Uh, yeah, unfortunately, he broke his shoulder. Um, so, we're going to have to look into other options for the moment. He's not going to make LAN 100%. We tried Is this more. the thing he did last time where he was weightlifting or something and dislocated his shoulder? Uh, yeah, this time he started feeling uh, some pain on his left shoulder while he was playing games. Then he tried to go to the gym, strengthen it, and just ended up ripping it entirely. So that's three to six months of gaming and it's surgery. So. Oh god, this is a shoulder slash uh, arm. So far we just trialed war. Um, he's not really sure if he can perform up to the level that he performed up earlier. Uh, we're hoping for the best. We're hoping we can convince him that he's good enough and that he's gonna enjoy playing. Because we are one short on options, really. 
Does uh, does he still hate Demo Man, or has he overcome that? I don't think so. I think he's just uh, isn't very. I don't know, like just keen to play sixes overall. I think he's more of a Highlander player nowadays. Um, as funny as that sounds, he didn't really seem very <laughs> excited when he played. Do you guys think we'll that it. you'll be able to cope without the leadership of Heist? Um, I don't know. It's kind of up in the air who's gonna take care of all the main calling and stuff. But when we trialed War, Zero was really, really dominant on the comps, and he was doing a good job of main calling. So uh, maybe we're gonna make it work. Hopefully. Is this gonna affect your outlook then for A55? Do you feel you can still challenge? Are you gonna make top three at LAN? Well, DM wise, War is an upgrade from Heist. Just if we get the call sorted, we could end up being a better team than before. But uh, it's a bit early to say. Kiedis, drop some knowledge here. You know, what do you think of the current goings on at TLR and your reaction to the the playoffs overall? Um. Wow, I don't really have much reaction to the playoffs. We just played good. Um, we had one on the day. Uh, we we kind of, we kind of expected to win, and that was did you happened. expect more from the other teams? Um, not really. I probably expected less of Nerd Rage to be honest. So I expected we would cope better with the changes they would make. Like, I think we actually didn't play that great to be honest against Nerd Rage. We could have done could have done better than that. Making a lot of um, a lot of mistakes that we'd kind of grown out of, but they kind of crept back into our game. But I mean, we went in cold and uh, you know no warm up things like that. So I put it down to down to that. Uh, TLR definitely could have played better, but I mean, at the end of the day, um, like they weren't they weren't bad. They just couldn't really get it together on the day. And then eventually, you know, under pressure, if you're losing consistently, you start to kind of tail off a bit you know it all gets a bit overwhelming after after losing for like 45 minutes like the last 50 minutes you, you lose focus and trail off so mm -hmm. you know that kind of makes sense like they're probably a better team than the score the score suggested but that's you know that's how it goes in the, in the big games if you just can't win rounds then you start to lose more rounds than you normally would um i, I don't know about the the demo shake up they have i mean it really sucks like obviously i sympathize a lot with with his uh i have similar problems of my own i know how much it how much it sucks, basically, not being able to do something you enjoy. So, yeah, my heart goes out to his, basically, and I hope TLR can, can sort something out. I mean, at a, at a glimpse, I don't really see them ever being the same without him. I think, even though he's not the greatest individual player, I think he brought a lot of uh, much-needed um, stability to that roster, like, brought kind of all the DM players together and kind of kept them in check. I don't think, I don't think one guy can do that. Like, Serotonin... I like Am said he has confidence in Serotonin, or he was Serotonin was stepping up, which is great. But Serotonin was always kind of, at least from what I saw, Serotonin was always, always like this kind of secondary guy on the comms, helping out, helping his out. I feel like with with some of the players they have, they could do with a second guy doing that. And I don't think War yeah. would be that guy, you know. I think Serotonin on his own would would struggle. Um, like his and Serotonin together would be nice, or Serotonin with someone else would be nice. But I don't think there's any such person available. Like there's only so much you can do, Colin as medic. Speaking from experience, like that first couple of seconds in any engagement where you don't have clear vision, you're trusting on your teammates to really deliver the information to you, and that can be uh, like life and death. Um, yeah. I feel like TLR Heist, like at the start of the season, there's no team without Heist, but maybe over the course of the season, Serotonin has gotten a lot more confident and could fill that role. But uh, essentially, like. Reason Gaming are carrying the can for Europe now, right? You are our biggest hope at A55. Do you feel that pressure? Um, no, I don't feel the pressure really. You know, we just have to play our game and and do good. Like, if we just play as we can play, that's all we can really ask of ourselves. And it's either going to be good enough or it's or it's not. Like, there's no pressure. You know, there's nothing different we can do. The things we've done so far have worked as well as they could. So we'll just keep doing that. You know. Hopefully we'll get you a few more awards tonight to push your confidence, get you ready for LAN. <laughs> but Kratos, give us the, your opinion as the team who almost made it into playoffs. What did you think of the playoffs overall? Were you surprised by any of the matches? Well, I guess TLR could have done a lot better in the finals, as Ems already said. Like They didn't play their game that they usually play. Like They're usually very aggressive and all this stuff, but it seems like they struggled a lot to find their game in the, uh, in the grand finals. Like, I don't know, they just played different than they usually did. They just played, like, very passive and all that stuff. 
like didn't have the aggression. Obviously, it's a lot um, harder against a team like Reason. Like they are really organized and all that stuff. But yeah, I think they played different than they usually did. I don't know if it, if they were nervous or anything, but was I don't know wasn't that enjoyable to watch because it wasn't the usual whoa, TLR. Whoa, whoa, Kratos! <laughs> you had big Gex on the uh, on the microphone giving you the the play by play. How is that not entertaining? That's the height of entertainment. <laughs> Do you mean the quality of the game? Well, no, I guess like TLR could have done a lot better, and it could have been a like a lot closer game. Who were you rooting for, Kratos? Who did you want to win? Um, like I'm like Heis is a good friend of mine, and he was like very keen into winning. So I I don't know he would have deserved it. And now I can't make it to land, like we said. But yeah, nothing you can do about it. Kratos, would you sell out dogs for a chance to play Demo Man in TLR? No. Oh wow, um, he wouldn't even do that. Could you do it, Kratos? You know, if you didn't have dogs, would you be the man to step um, up and save TLR? Like, to be honest, I guess I'm playing kind of similar that, like, to Heist. Like, Heist, obviously, like, I played with Heist together in a team, and he, like, kind of mentored me back in season 14, and, like, I've been watching every hour of his game, and I guess it was season 6, 17, I can't remember, where I was, like, kind of back up for TLR, and I was watching, like, every of the game. And I guess I know how Heist is playing and how he wants his team to play. So I could possibly play there, I would say, if I get back into demo. But, yeah, I What do you do think that. of, uh, just looking at Twitch chat here, Thalash says, TLR Spud. Could you see that happen in Sideshow? I don't, I don't think so, particularly. I mean, uh, in terms of how he'd fit with the team, it's not, I don't think it's the player they need. I don't know. I, what about Ale? Like, he is... Kind of does calls like damage. Yeah, Ale, Ale does. Ale calls quite a lot, but his calls are he's he's like a very inexperienced player. I I think he he might fit with the team kind of, but he's he's not particularly confident in in his calling. He's keen and he wants to improve, but I think um, you know maybe with a few more seasons, uh, really really trying to improve, he might be at the level of of Colin and Devaman that, that they would require for this team, but at the moment a little too inexperienced, I think. But yeah, that's the kind of player I think that TLR need. It's like someone to really take the reins. Um, is there can, like, anybody else the in team the team other much. than Seraton who would be that second person, like Cadus was saying? Um, well, I can do it to an extent. Um, when I have it's a bad you, day, man. I go mute and uh, I can't get my game back on call-wise or DM-wise. So it would make us an even more inconsistent team than we are now if I was having any sort of responsibility in comms. But, uh, you need to break through the mental barrier ramps. You need to, you need yeah, to smash it down, to, smash that wall down. A lot and, of people uh, find you it know, not, not go mute. That uh, Shutterburn actually really uh, was into the idea of him main calling entirely. Um, and it's not actually a terrible idea. As for the brief time that we run Conch, he actually was in control of the comms. He taught us how to play it. And uh, we kind of made it work in the end as well. It's just that uh, Shadowburn keeps telling us that when he main calls, he wants you know full control. He doesn't want anyone else to fill in, or otherwise they'll just confuse him, and he will end up going mute mid game. Which is uh, you know if he kind of go that way, then we're putting a lot of trust on him. But um, that's another option. Like we're not completely fucked in terms of well, why not? That section. Why not go with someone who has some fucking vision and like has a plan rather than this. He sounds like a dictator. He sounds like an absolute Russian dictator. He's the Russian Putin Mark II, and he's just gonna uh, he's gonna lead your team to victory. But uh, then you're gonna commit mass genocide at the end of five fifty five. Let's let's uh, let's stop talking about the future or what might happen, guys. We're here to uh, reminisce about season twenty one. It's over. Well, the playoffs are still going, and we'll talk a bit about that later in the mid. High and low ones. We'll just talk about the high ones. But let us get underway, Sonny Black. I want you to just spin your tumbola of awards there and pick one out at random and discuss the nominations with us. Go for it, man. With with which one are we starting? That's up to you, motherfucker! The best German in Prem. Let's start with that one. 
<laughs> There's only one, and it's Kratos <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> yeah, I win something. I'm so happy. The Kratos oh, only not... in the in the casters though, and we won't start with the casters. Don't start with player of the season either. Probably want to save that one till the end. Let's do some useless class like soldier. Like no one cares what soldiers to be honest. There's two soldiers though. Let's just oh, start that... uh, with demo men. Okay, fair enough. Go ahead, Sonny Bike. Tell us about the the nominations. Um. Nominated were Cadis, Rip, Kuna, Spud, His, His Dr. Phil and Death, but uh, only Cadis, Rip and Kuna and Spud made it into the polls. Um, See, I think this is a really interesting one because the fact that Heist didn't actually make it into the poll is uh, surprising. I mean, his, it, it seems to be a bit of like nomination for D. I'm really surprised the fact that Kuna made it up there. I guess pe people always have this problem where they don't know whether to take calling and leadership into account for it, but uh, I'm surprised that Kuna got in there and not Heist. That is kind of disgusting. But, like, it is a popularity contest to some extent. People remember the big moments, the big frags. But these were just but they're the more impressed by it. From the oh, players. that's true, actually. What am I talking about? <laughs> Thanks, FSA. Keep me Wait, in check. Like, yeah, I'm going to assume that Kate here. has got like 90% of them. Then there's one for the rest of them. I guess oh, what, is the, what is the breakdown, Sonny? What was the percentage of those nominations then? Kate has got 67% of nominations. Rip got 11. Kuna and Spud got 7. And Heiss, Phil and Death got 2. That's such a massive difference between Cadus and everybody else. <laughs> 66, 7 and then 11 for the second place. Let's uh, let's run around everyone here then. I nominated Cadus. We actually petitioned Sonny Black to get a chance to nominate people. Saito, who did you nominate? Yeah, I went this as well. I think this one was uh, was a whitewash. Zebo? Cadus. Kratos? Uh, I was nominating my teammate. <laughs> going for spot because like everyone was so nominating like Cadis anyways like it's not I where well, I actually voted for spot as well I guess but like, I could have voted for someone else I just wanted spot to be in the nomination because he played a very good season. Can you nominate your teammates? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, Cadis, who did you nominate? I think I ended up nominating spot in the end. Um, of course. I want. I wanted to nominate both Spud and Serotonin for the debut, um, but I ended up going with Serotonin for that, so I nominated Spud for demo. Um, like I, I don't think he was the best, but he was kind of like the standout like performer for me, I guess. So I went with Spud. Um, uh, I nominated Spud actually. I thought it was really good. Really, the heavy carry of a team that is surprisingly well this season. It was really hard to play against as well. True, true. Sonny, did you uh, get a nomination in there? No, I didn't nominate. Okay. So, uh, give us the results then, man. Surprise <clears throat> us. Uh, on uh, in fourth place with 10% or 10.67% is Spud. In third place with 11.18% uh, is Kuna. Should, like, should I do winner and then second place? Follow your heart, man, you know? <laughs> Trust Always your so instincts. As a showman. Um, and the, like, the winner with Drum roll. 65% is Cadis, and in second place is Rip with 13%. Congratulations, Cadis. I probably should have asked everybody who they voted for first, but I voted for Cadis. Anyone else not vote for Cadis? Why do we nominate people and then not vote for them? <laughs> I don't think that makes sense, does it? You can do a tactical nomination, you know, if you... Yes! Get us! What the fuck? <laughs> Has his Skype crashed or something? <laughs> oh, he's dropped from Humble. He's disappeared. He's just sitting there. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know where he's gone, but he's, <laughs> he's obviously missed the announcement. He doesn't even realize that he's won. He's getting his reaction from the Twitch chat now. <laughs> Did you guys uh, feel that there was a contest in the demo category in this season, or was Kiris just head and shoulders above the rest, Sergio? 
I think he really was. I think uh, normally Rib steps up and plays a really good season, but I, I don't know. I didn't really see a great performance from Rib this season. I, I guess you can disagree if you want, but I think he was really quite outplayed by uh, some of the other demos. I was impressed by Spud, but I don't think he was really on a, a good enough team to be contesting the title of best demo. I don't know. It's difficult when the, the the games aren't very close. Like you don't get a good feel for how good he actually is. Certainly, if he carries on playing, he's going to be one of the best demos, I think, because he's uh, he's pretty strong. Don't want to inflate his ego, but he's pretty good. <laughs> but yeah, I think it was uh, Kadus, uh, pretty much head and shoulders above everyone this season, especially really easily after reason changed the roster. Because I I don't know whether it was like the calling or something, but as soon as Knox and Mike joined the team, Kadus just seemed to be able to play his game, and he was playing a lot better. And the team was working better, and it was are just it, it was just much better. Are you with us, Kiris? He's not. Hello? No, he's not in Mumble with us at all. You know, what he could do is just unmute on Skype, and he'd be able to... You can't connect to Mumble for some reason. Is that what I guess you want to converse via Skype. Yeah. About the so demos, I didn't feel like any of the demos like, stood out in any way. I don't think anyone of them had like a particularly good season, but I think Kedus was just a bit better than the others. That's the only reason I went for them. Damning with faint praise there. Is that something to do with the fact that Demo Man got nerfed in season twenty? Is that the the impact that just Demo Man <laughs> oh, hello. is less impactful? Oh we hear Kedus now next. You hear me humming? You... No, just just now when you said hello, you're back. Oh. Congratulations. Thanks. Uh we're just theory crafting here. Two things, I guess. Uh, do you feel that demo still has a, a lessened role in the game, perhaps since the nerf last season? But also, did you feel that I think Mumble's dying for me. Don't know if you can still hear me, but I can't hear you anymore. I think that was just admirable that died. Although that might be me. Who knows? I, think I can hear we you. We are going are we wild here. Are we having a mutiny and just overthrowing everything? We're being DDoSed on Mumble, who knows? That's, hey, what were you saying? It cut out for me. Yeah, so uh, two things. Do you still feel... Do you feel that Demo Man... Uh, Zebus, I was saying he didn't feel that any of the Demo Men throughout this season. Do you think that is still due to the nerf from the previous season? And also, uh, since recent made the roster changes, do you feel that has like, freed you up? mentally to you know focus more on actually playing demo man has it unleashed you um i think demos still have a big impact on the game but it's not an impact you see so much like you have to kind of look a bit deeper to really see what the demos are doing and how they're performing and stuff like you can't just look at stats or like the kill feed for things like that and um i think i don't mean it like any disrespect by this whatsoever but uh, zebo often has like quite a a frag and DM like heavy perspective on the game and that kind of perspective doesn't really give you the story of demos anymore I don't think it's a little more understated but um I still think they have like a big impact on the game uh like I guess yeah it's like it's easier as well obviously it's way easier to play demo without having to call just, you just stand around and shoot things like you can just focus on calling the things that demos should call you know damage and focusing and things like that so it really frees you up to just do those things but I mean up until up until reason became like up until we picked up Mike and that, um, I still felt like demo was really crucial for like all the fights. It always felt like if I didn't have a significant impact in a fight, then we wouldn't win it. Um, I don't know if other demos would kind of concur on that, but that was always it. Still felt like that to me. Except the only difference now is you don't get frags for it anywhere near as often. Like before, you would just kind of you find a cluster of people, you'd shit on them, and you'd kill half of them, like just by default. Whereas now, yeah. you, you know, you do the damage, but you don't get the frags, so people don't tend to notice. Sorry, I'm just uh, I'm being amused here by Twitch chat. We have uh, an incantation. Kato's <laughs> lips around Maggie's cock with his shunt. I summon Nox. That almost works. But uh, I'm just like 12 years old. I couldn't stop laughing there. But I was listening to you at the same time. But I know these awards always drag out because we do the same thing nine or ten times. So uh, in the spirit of that, let's quickly move ahead to an award that was Maybe more of a contest? I'm not even sure how this one will have worked. Let's go just down the list, Sonny. How about that? Make it easy for you. Medic of the season. Tell me about the nominations. Nominated. Oh, yeah. 
nominated were Nox, Bull, Serotone, Graba, Kratos, Dika, and Skeech. But into the polls made it only Nox, Bull, and Serotone. I voted for Skeech. Or nominated <laughs> Skeech, even. That was my protest vote. Uh, Saito? Um, Nox. Yeah, yeah, Nox. Kratos? Nox. Zebo? Nominated and voted for Nox. Ams? Nox. Kiris? Nox. No, oh my god, a clean <laughs> sweep. Except for my skied vote. <laughs> Sonny, you didn't nominate. Nope. Uh, okay. So, did everyone actually vote for Nox then? Because I, I voted Nox, yeah. Nox. And the nominees, who were the top three then? Serotone. Bull. Bull. What was the... Uh, tell us the results then. Go for it. Put me in the here. <laughs> I'm so confused. Um, in third place with 20.02% is Bull. That's and just Is uh, With 59.04% is Nox. And in second place is Serotonin with 20... Twenty. Just to straight searching, twenty. Searching for that last uh, uh, last <laughs> digit there, are you? Something <laughs> falling off the end of the <laughs> Excel spreadsheet. Oh, yeah, that's... good lord. Who knows what's going on tonight with the sound? But uh, yeah, that's that's interesting. I think Knox played the best medic out yes, of the season. That is a uh, unsurprising result. Maryland played a game. Did no one nominate Maryland? He played a really garbage game actually for four twenty five. But, um, is
We're back. I don't know what happened. I was in the middle of trying to generate some sort of discussion about Medic. I don't know if anyone heard it. Sideshow. Do we want to talk about uh, the Medic of the Season award or will we just cut our losses there and say Nox is number one? I think it's cursed. Just, I think the Medic of the Season award is cursed with the D. I think if TLR had done better in the finals, Serotonin would have been in with a shout. But he didn't play that great in the finals, and that was like, you know, you, the big game. You guys don't find it surprising at all that uh, Serotonin is above Bull then? Uh, not really. Uh, not in terms of. Like, I'd, I don't find it surprising one way or the other who would be second or third, but Serotonin is the more like. He does the more standout plays, you know? He has some good mechanics in like evasion and surfing and shit, and. I think he had the better, you know, the better like glamour moments, which is pretty much what it comes down to when you win these awards. I think the Ubers from both of those teams in the later games that was like were their weakest points in terms of the medic uh, pocket, only controlling the Ubers for both of those teams, TLR and Nerdrage. I think that were those were some of the most questionable players in the in the playoffs in the game just before that. So I don't know whether that comes down to the medic or whatever. Yeah. I had Ips on my ear as well, complaining about Bool and Seraton, um, trying to talk some sense into them, but he's just some scrub who's already quit the scene, so nobody cares what he thinks. So I have to say, uh, when it came to the demo men, you said you weren't really impressed by any of them. What did you think of the standard of medicking this season? Do you want to throw some salt on that too? I Like, Caleb was obviously impressive, I voted for him, but I didn't think no, any of them stood out. But for the medics, I voted Nox because he's obviously like he is the best. There is just nothing to it, really. Is he? Well, I was trying to. I don't know how much of this heard earlier before the mumble went off, but I was trying to ask like, is Nox the best because he's the best medic mechanically, or is he the best because of his oh, brain he, sense? He's probably the worst mechanic-wise of these three, but like he understands the game so well and he just positions himself very good, so. And he controls the team around him, which is, I suppose, half the battle. He doesn't have to put himself in too many awkward situations or trust everyone else. Uh, yeah. I would kind of lump medic positioning into the mechanics of the class, yeah, though. Yeah. Like, positioning is such an important thing in terms of medic that it really is one of the basic mechanics of, of playing it, is how you position yourself in terms of the team and in terms of the game. And I think Noxus is better than the other medics. I think he deserves to have it. He, he consistently has... Uh, less deaths while still being able to get into this team and uh, and uh, dish out the heals and has better ubers than them and and all of these things. I mean, it helps that they win as well. Like, uh, although I didn't see many of the games he played this season, he's always very good at setting the team up in any uh, any play really, like where he expects everyone to be. You know, scouts on the high ground stuff like that. But uh, that's something more medics need to do like really set things up around them because it's their position that's the crucial one generally i'm not going to talk about this too much we're going to move ahead to the next award sonny black tell me the nominees or nominations for pocket soldier of the season um <clears throat> nominated were captain tech m shadow burn and wonsu but uh, into the polls only made it captain with 46%, tech with uh, 30, 37 and M's with 9. Did you just laugh derisively at Wanzu, man? Because he, he was pretty good this Wanzu season. Wanzu played pocket for the 90% of the season. I think he played Roma for two games, didn't he? Why was he getting nominated on the, the, the pocket? pocket. Oh, they were doing pocket. Pay attention, <laughs> Apparently Shadowburn <laughs> also played pocket. Uh, but Shadowburn did play Pocket a few times too. He did. I'm just not paying attention. <laughs> I can only apologise. You heard Shadowburn and you thought we're talking about rumours. Admit it. Come out <laughs> from under your table, say Cho. All right then. Shame. I um, I know how much I can justify my nomination, but I think I went for Tech. I also voted for Tech. Just because, you know, I don't believe Captain. That was it. It was in my mind. I was like, am I going to nominate Tech or Captain? And I was like, Captain had Mike in his team. He got carried. I'm voting for Tech. Who did you nominate slash vote for, Sideshow? Tech for both of them. 
and I don't think I can particularly justify it. Like Captain really probably was the the better the better play. I think throughout the season Tech looked better and he plays more of a default pocket role and does a lot for his team. But when it actually came down to the playoffs, he really wasn't playing that well. But then you're not supposed to judge everything based on the playoffs. So I don't know. I don't know. I think it was. Hmm. Hmm. I don't trust your intuition, man. You know. Uh, I'm. S you're probably sitting there thinking these two fucks haven't even mentioned my name yet. Who did you think was the best pocket? Who did you nominate? Who did you vote for? I went with the uh, captain. I think. Uh... I'm not really in the contest between those two. They both put up better stats and generally uh, play a better game than I do, I feel. And they have a better aim as well. But when it comes uh, in between those two, uh, Captain actually, I think, uh, does more for his team. And he's a uh, way better player, in my opinion, than Tech. Like, uh, miles better. Tech just kind of sits back and gets some easy frags, but Captain actually does room and damage and, you know, I'm a huge Captain fan. I think Captain really deserves this one. Kira, so you're going to echo those sentiments? <laughs> you actually took the words I'm up. I was going to say, I, I have to echo what Am said. Like, um, It's funny really as well, because Captain had this reputation for just being a like a false reputation, it's worth pointing out. And it was kind of like a, a joke between him and Haffy that just perpetuated itself, where Captain is just a baiter, you know, and just gets good stats because he baits and shit. But um, I don't know, Tech looks really impressive, especially against like weaker teams, Tech. Uh, it's very impressive looking, but Captain just does such, such like a more versatile role. Right? He does it really, really well for his team. Like if you kind of look at the the top three this season, you have Tech, the complete like passive, standing at the back, clean up pocket role. Ams, the complete opposite, like going balls deep for his team, and then Captain is like kind of in the middle and playing each role as well as as well as the two people I mentioned, but you know balancing both and kind of bringing it all together at the same time. Um, like I, saw, I, saw, I saw a quote from Tech, like, I don't know who showed me it or where it came from, but it was like, something like, Captain, everyone thinks Captain is sick because he gets all the heels and stands at the back. I'm going to not jump this season. I'm just going to stand at the back or some shit like that. And I don't know. Like, if Captain said that to me, I would, like, slap him and say, shut the fuck up. You know? Like, play for your team. You don't play for yourself. And Captain did that this season, like, really fucking well. Yeah, it's definitely one of the awards. Like I said at the start, I felt like a funny because I hadn't seen the later games of the season but uh, I, I even felt when I was voting for Tech that it wasn't uh, a rational vote I don't know why uh, Captain has yet to win my respect work harder Captain but uh, Kratos tell me about your nominations and the votes I guess it was a pretty tough one like I guess um, Captain and Tech both played a very good season but I guess Captain was a little bit better so I don't think like Tech uh, did play much worse it was really like tough to vote, but yeah. In the end, I nominated Captain as well. Yes, it's I think one of the things. Sorry, just a just a little point. One of the things that makes um the difference, in my opinion, as well, is like Captain is always supported by a lot of players on his team, but Tech kind of plays like a solo pocket role. So it's like I don't know. It's it's very different, and there's a it lot takes more a lot of pressure, pressure on Tech. Yeah. So I don't know. I th I think that's worth pointing out as well. I feel uh, that he's kind of he did more for his team, but that's really because of a better supporting cast. Uh, Zebasai, you want to give us your thoughts, an unbiased opinion there? Who'd you nominate slash vote for? I voted and nominated Tech. No need to go into that one. No. Uh, Sonny Black then. Hit us with the results, please. In third place with 13% is Ems, and uh, the winner with 54.8% is Captain, over the second place Tech with 31%. Okay, the people have, have uh, in Captain is our winner, congratulations to Captain. Kiedis, do you want to give a speech on his behalf? Oh, it's well deserved. I'm third place. How does it feel, buddy? Um, I'm happy I wasn't the uh, polls at all. What a positive Zip. spin to put on it. <laughs> uh, Zebasai, are you mad that you didn't win this award? 
Did you not play no. every class this season? <laughs> I think I did play like a <laughs> game of Pocket, but I uh, can't remember. Okay. We're gonna... We had a good discussion about it already. I think I need to, you know, show Captain a little bit more respect. I need to play this game more. Uh, sh I was gonna say Shadowburn of the season. Let's go to Ruling <laughs> Soldier of the season, please. Uh, tell us about the nomination. The nomination, Sadak. <clears throat> Nominated were uh, Mike, Shadowburn, Zebuzai, Zoop, uh, yeah, Zoop, Cos, and Crystal got one nomination, but they didn't make it into the post. Alright, my Freudian slip, given away that I nominated and voted for Shadowburn. He is uh, an exciting player to watch. Josh Wilkinson, your thoughts? Um, For this one, I based it more on the later end of the season. I voted for Zebatai. Uh, I nominated and voted for Zebatai. I thought um, he played very, very well uh, at the end of the season, better than the other Romas. Um, Barb. Well, I don't know. I don't think you can really put Mike in there for the... I mean, I, I'm fully expecting him to win just based on the fact that he's MG Mike. But I think that the kind of role that he played on Roma was... I don't know. It was an odd one. Um, it took a lot of heals. Didn't particularly make room. He was more of like... He was, what really was more of like a second pocket. It was an, it was an odd thing to to watch for that. So yeah, I voted for Zebusai because I thought he did a lot for the team and played very very well. Kratos, I was nominating Zoop because I guess he played in a very very good season until he got replaced. That's like it? my skis bro. <laughs> skis was good though, but man. Oh, no, honestly, just I guess the, it uh... was like pretty hard to play against Zoop. Like he always did like. This stuff where he was just like distracting and like uh, yeah, creating He always space does the most direct stuff. thing. Every time I cast his games, he does like these fucking bombs into six people. And then, then is wondering like why that didn't work. I, I was glad to see Zub get cut for Mike. Okay. <laughs> Abs, tell me about your nominations. I went with Shadowburn. And votes. Even when TLR was blowing deck and the combo was doing Horrid, our flank was still on point. So Shadowburn all the way. Uh, apart from the stream, it's too loud now. <laughs> apart from <laughs> the deleting people, the oh, uh, holds out. Boo! Uh. <laughs> so uh, I hope we just popped everyone's ears. We need to find some balance here, John. With the stream volume. Answer, uh, John Pe the people complained the stream volume was too low, so I asked him to put it up, but no. That seemed to coordinate with me shouting. It's not you, Ops. Uh, Zebusai. Your nomination and vote. I nominated Mike, and I didn't vote in this one because I was in it <laughs> and I made that a move. Sonny Black, can you check and see if Zebusai actually voted for himself or not, please? Wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> can you do that? To yeah, call this like laying the... shit out live on air. I didn't vote for it. the votes I was in. I didn't vote at all. Alright, whilst we wait for that real result of if Zeba was voted for himself, Kiris, no, who did didn't. you nominate and vote for? I nominated and voted for Mike. Um, yeah, he's best. But like, it's interesting because if you think about the last season, Mike won it. Like, there wasn't even a fucking vote. But like, the position as oh, a whole yeah. has improved like so much this season. Like with Shadowburn and I guess with Zebo playing uh, Roma instead of Scout this season, like it's just so much more of like a competitive position at the moment than it was last season. But I still think Mike is the best. But Maybe Shadowburn deserves it because he played the whole season and was not that much worse than Mike. But I think he was. I don't think he's as good as Mike, but he's not far off, and he played the whole season consistently. So uh, I went with Mike, but you know, it could go either way. And Zebo was obviously good, but maybe I just didn't pay attention to Nerd Rage enough to really uh, appreciate it. Is there any uh, rule, Sonny? Like, do you have to play a minimum number of games to be considered for a nomination? Uh, I think I made it three matches. So Reason managed to scrape in there with their new roster. Uh, put aside of our misery, then Sonny Black reveal the results of the Roaming Soldier of the Season Award. 
in third place with almost 15% is Sebozai. And uh, the winner with 53% is Shadowburn over second placed Mike with 31%. Finally, we ended the tyranny, the reign of Mike. This is the first time since season 13 that Mike didn't win a soldier award, I think. So wow, they did really? Michael Adams. That's it. that's pretty <laughs> incredible. The first time since season thirteen. I yes. guess uh, Shadowburn has that big fan base from all his frag movies as well. They're like uh, you know the the rock music and the the guy looking up from his helmet with the green eyes and then he <laughs> lots of people. He asked people to vote for him. <laughs> Are you surprised by that result, Stachio? Uh No, I don't think so. I think. Um, well, no, I, I kind of am. Did the best just, player win, or is it the most popular player? Yeah, I think I think it's the most popular player. But Shadowburn isn't bad, and like Kedda said, he played the full season. Um, I think he's possibly one of the most surprisingly good players because I didn't expect him to play that role in TLR as well as he did coming into the season. Because uh, previous to that, he'd always been like the kingpin in his team. I didn't think he would be the kind of person who'd be prepared to kind of, um, you know, play a. a much more facing role in the team, and he really fitted the team well, in my opinion. Remind me, like at the start of the season before with the weapon folded, who were TLR gonna take as rumor? Um, Salentus. Oh yeah, and he wouldn't tag up. That climb. I can't hear you. I'm s we just hear a lot of white noise. As the better? tornado in Finland. Now we're here. First we had Sil. He didn't like the tag. Then we had Larval, he didn't like the idea of going to land, and we got Shadowburn. It's fitted nicely. That was a sick pickup for you guys at the time. It seemed to work out pretty well. Kiedis, your boy Mike, he lost out. Tell me about it. Um, Mike is the best, but he didn't have the opportunity to prove it for the whole season, because he wasn't playing. So it's a kind of a, a, probably a fair result. But not really a reflection, in my opinion, of who's the, the best. But I'm kind of glad Mike didn't win it, because there's nothing like Mike when he's motivated, well, extra motivated, to prove something to people. So, <laughs> so rest in peace, Europe. Well, rest in peace, the world. I'm glad to see you've done it and get a little recognition. That's also good. Uh, anybody upset by this result? Zebesai, you finished third. Is that Just warranted? like in the season, you know? Uh, like, both these players are uh, obviously very good, and they're very popular, both of them. And uh, they probably did play a better season than me. So it's fine. Do you think if you weren't such a little bitch boy and just stuck to one class for the season, you could have run one roamer of the season? I don't know, man. Like, my roamer, I take very little heal. I won't look as flashy, I guess. And uh, that obviously has an impact. But I, as I said, I think both of these had a very good season. Have you ever... Shadowburn's demo or Mike's demo? No, I have not. On the, on the route, 555. Either I'm lagging or you're lagging. I can't hear you. You can't hear me? Am I a robot? Yeah. Am I still a robot? Do you hear robot? Oh man, I can't hear anyone else. <laughs> okay, yeah, uh, reconnect. Am I still a robot? We are all robots. No, it's not. So we're getting uh, DDoS and another Bumble, is that it? Yeah, probably. Is there some reason we can't just unmod Skype? The Sunny Black isn't on Skype. Is there some reason we can't invite Sunny Black Skype and unmod on Skype? Make it happen.
Alright. Go to uh, Bumble. In chat. We're back. We're hopefully not robots anymore. And we're just going to jump to the next award again. Uh, let us discuss the nominations for Best Scout of the Season, please, Sunny Black. The nominations were Stark, Huffy Cool, Nico, and the ones that didn't make it in uh, Shocky, Forsaken, Herpy, Lupus, and Sheepy. Shocky and Herpy didn't even make the cut. Poor guys. Uh, what was the, the spread of the nominations then? How stacked was it? Uh, Stark got 62%, Hafiku got 13 Nico got 9 uh, Shocky 4 and the rest 2. That's really surprising. I find that very surprising that Stark got such a huge percentage of the votes. I uh, nominated Tony the Tiger and voted for him. Throughout the season, like he just seemed to be doing so much work for his team. Whenever they actually let him play scout, he really seemed to stabilise things for Nerd Rage. And I guess I'm just a big fan of Tony the Tiger anyway. What about yourself, Sideshow? I think he's doing a lot of stuff for his team. And one of the biggest things that he does is he takes no heels to do it as well. He, he really takes very few heels and takes very little amount of damage compared to a lot of the other scouts, which... Um, which are in the the pool there. Uh, most of them are high heel scouts that get decent stats at the end of it. But I actually voted and nominate um, Haffy Cool because I think, uh, as well as being one of the players that has most stepped up, I think he is probably the best scout uh, around at the moment in that defensive role, uh, like pit role, particularly because he doesn't play like a massive bitch lord. And he like still Samsy. manages, to, like yeah, like like Samsy, like Happy, like Banny, like these these pocket scouts. Normally, they just sit with their heels and 
they're just so passive and I think Happy Cool really plays that role well without being a super passive scout he finds a way to put the work in there uh, Zebasai you were scout this season last season right yep uh, Tell but, us. Uh, I voted for uh, Tony and I nominated Tony. That is to be expected. What did you think of the standard of the other scouts this season? I'd have put uh, Huffy Cool on second, I guess. But it wouldn't surprise me if Nico wins it all, because the French guys will probably all vote for him. Any uh, mm-hmm. thoughts for your fellow Swede, Walters? Forgotten casually of the season? I didn't vote for the guys that had. Uh, left the league so I didn't pay too much attention to it Kid, are you still holding a candle for Walters? Uh, no, I think um, I actually can't remember which way round I did it, I, I nominated either Happy or Stark and then voted for the other one <laughs> I don't remember which way round I did it though I think I nominated Tony and voted Happy I was kind of torn between them uh, Tony had like the biggest impact of any scout, like individual play, in, like individual player having an impact for his team. Mm-hmm. Uh, Stark is like literally the only person to consider, like in that regard. But Haffy was like just so like consistent, like so solid, like all round, just like really like almost like completely seamlessly like transitioned when we had the big roster change. He just kind of found himself in a slightly altered role and just went into it like without like blinking. And it was just like a perfect transition and played both like different kind of different styles in the season like and played them all really well but like Tony had the the biggest impact um, I feel yeah. like uh, Tony the Tiger is the guy that when you see him play you can see that he's thinking about the the big picture as scout like he is really considering what's best for his team at that moment in time like I feel like a lot of scouts just sort of get tunnel vision or show up and play and like shoot things but he seems to have a game plan that's why I voted for him anyway uh Amps your nominee and vote I did end up going with Nico just because uh, like I said it before our flank was always playing great and Nico when he's on fire I don't think there's any scout or any player that can stop him really I mean, for some... some what, like, by Nuki in the 1v1 Cup? Well, yeah, maybe Nuki, but he didn't play this <laughs> season, did he? So, <laughs> I, I, it might seem a bit biased. All, all those three scouts are top-notch, obviously, and Happy Cool is really, really good. Um, but I went with Nico. Maybe it's a bit biased. I really think that he's DM-wise uh, probably better than those two, and he's uh, been a consistent performer all season. Kratos, did you put in a German nomination there? Maybe a little Shoggy fan in you? I'm a big Shoggy fan, um, but I did nominate uh, Tony the Tiger, though, because I guess he deserves it. Like, Huffy could play a very good season, as Kate has mentioned, and I guess Nico had some really good games as well, but he did have very bad games as well, so um, I didn't nominate him, didn't consider it, so... You yeah. voted for Tony? Yeah. Okay, Sonny. Seems to be a common consensus here. Apart from Ams, the idiot. Uh, tell me who won. Or tell me the results. <laughs> uh, in third place with 25% is Huffy Cool. <clears throat> and the winner is uh, Stark or Tony with 44%. With second place, Nico behind him with 29%. That was kind of close, but uh, would have been more fitting to see Haffy in second place there, I feel, but I'm sure he'd just be happy to be nominated, but to me, Tony the Tiger, a worthy winner, anyone want to, you know, say something, now's your time. Haffy should have got more votes. Like, it's as it's I said unbelievable earlier, that Haffy's looking for The French community is so big, so like, they will all vote for Nico. I don't understand all the hate though. Like, what exactly did Nico do so bad? All season? you have to do is watch him, and she just watch him, and he just runs in, and he just takes the stupidest fights in the world, and he just throws so himself away. When you're if he winning dies and in those like... fights, is like ninety percent. Then maybe it's worth taking them. When you're it's like, but so it's just, strong, it's good if it's it just doesn't look like there's any thought applied to it. I think it just, you're just like, like brainwashed by the grand finals where he. 
kind of did that shit like uh, during the season. Yeah, he but that was when really it didn't work. Player. Like it, in the rest of the season, you guys were playing against teams for the majority of it that were a lot worse that he can just do that to. But he doesn't change his game up when it doesn't work. There's no thought applied to his game. Like he has one style of play, and it might be a decent one because his team's that good. But there's no thought behind it. There's no assessment he's of the situation. You, Is this gonna, gonna work? Is this man. He's yeah, gonna he's gonna destroy all. clockwork, isn't he? He's gonna get minced, man. We'll see, we'll see. That's a good point Sato makes. I don't say that often, but you know, it is, uh, it's very true. Nico just kind of does the same thing a lot of the time. Uh, how did he actually perform in the playoffs since I didn't see it, Sato? We'll see. Uh, he, he dribbled a bit in the playoffs, but I mean, Amps has got a point. He played a very, yeah, very good Nico game for the rest of the, the season. The only uh, player who kept us in the game in the fucking finals uh, yeah, dribbled in won, the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. <laughs> he, he dribbled in the playoffs, performed. but the, he, the only performed because he managed to like keep getting behind reason and forcing them to come back. Yeah, well, the but fact it's like, that like, it, well, it, it's fair, fair enough, right? But in the rest of the season as well, he was getting really good KAD and he's got really good DM and all of that kind of stuff, but he's a flexible player. I don't think he thinks about what he does either. Fair enough. Zeba say, you don't pull any punches. What do you think of Nico? A scout. Uh, well, uh, aim-wise, he's the best out of these, or all the scouts in the season. Uh, but like, I'd rate him 30 scout. Like, he should be 30. It's not bad. But I rate Huffy and Tony above him. Purely yeah, because... yeah. Of course, of course. When we're talking about this stuff as well, like you have to consider that Nico's better than ninety nine of percent of people in the in Europe at Scout, and like we're only comparing him here as brainless compared to like the absolute top uh, section of of Premiership Scouts. I mean, he's a fantastic player. Um, I'm not. I'm not trying to dispute that. I think the way like the way it is, or the way a lot of us see it, is like his aim is like you know maybe. Five ten percent better than the rest, but his brain is like thirty percent behind. So, like on average, it averages out, you know. I really think that Nico isn't really like a, an idiot. Like, I'm not saying he's an idiot, uh, but he's yeah, playing yeah, against the smartest yeah, scouts like, in the world, uh, and he's well, not on what, level what I meant in to that say regard. Is that he's like he he is a pretty like intellectual player. Like he knows what he's doing, but when things aren't going our way as a team, he feels like he's the one who needs to step up and make the plays. Um, much like Sebo's eye in BK, for example. Like, Sebo would always uh, go in and get, like, a clutch at, like, these moments, and he'd always be the one to step up when the team isn't doing that well. But Sebo's a fucking genius veteran of multiple seasons, has already won multiple awards, played multiple classes, he's got such a better read on the game than Nico. But it's not like, yeah. it's not It's not even like, it's not this award isn't who's the best scout in Europe, it's who, which scout played the best this season. And... Maybe Nico was disadvantaged because in the big game your team didn't play that great, so he had to like you know he had like you said he had this mindset he has to step it up and kind of go out the extra mile. But in doing that, like you know, he wasn't really given an opportunity to play a complete, well-rounded game. So yeah, yeah, I get what However you, you look at it, yeah, the performance wasn't on the same level, but maybe it's not his fault. But all we can look at is the performances. Yeah. No, I'm sorry, I just get triggered when people are calling Nico a retard. Man. I, I like to I'm not he's a retard. No, I'm I'm, just, I, I should stop reading Twitch chat before I get mad. <laughs> <laughs> I like to abuse Nico at least once every episode, so <laughs> glad we got that out of the way. Let us go to the next award here. The off class are up, like the nominees, nominations, whatever. Um, <clears throat> the nominations were, or nominees were Flippy. Uh, with 58%, Forsaken with 27%, and the ones that didn't make it in, Walters and Lupus with 4%, and Huffy Cool and Take with 2%. Rest in peace, Walters. I voted and nominated for Big Victor uh, Forsaken. He is a high impact, off classing player. Saito, what do you think? I think that's a fair nomination. I actually voted for Flippy <laughs> because uh, I thought he was pretty good. Are we lagging again? <laughs> the um, yeah, I voted for Flippy because I thought his sniping was uh, was pretty good. It was all right. I liked the way that he was uh, getting rolled out to like process mids and stuff. I thought the way he's utilizing his team is pretty cool. But Come on, man. fantastic as well. Four twenty-five pre Forsaken, they were a garbage team. 
when he arrived, his scout and his off-classing ability, his calling as well, elevate them up. How can you look beyond Forsaken? Don't talk to me. Kratos, who did you nominate and vote for? Nominated Flippy. Forsaken did have a very good season as well, but I guess Flippy was better this season. Fuck you as well, Kratos. Say, <laughs> say, who did you nominate and vote for? I gave it to Flippy. Oh my god. Stop sucking French dick. <laughs> Kedis, who did you vote for and nominate? Uh, I think I gave it to Flippy, but I didn't really know, to be honest, who was better. Like, obviously, there's only two candidates. I didn't really know who was the better one. But I played against Flippy t- twice in the last week of the season, like four maps in the last week of the season. So that's really all. I- By the end of the season, like that was all I could remember. I don't even remember playing against Forsaken anymore. Yeah, all my nominations are based on the first tweaks, I guess. Um, who did you nominate Flippy. and vote for? A sniper. Really hard did- to play against. Did Flippy uh, have some incredible, incredible games in the last week, say you? Mm, uh, I don't think he had any like ridiculous standout performances. It's just that whenever they use, like, they use him a lot on Sniper, and he always seems to do well. Like he's always useful on Sniper. You know, sometimes you switch people off to Sniper, and they just kind of dribble around for a bit, and you're at a disadvantage because they don't hit anything. Wow. Yeah, yeah, essentially. <laughs> um, but yeah, whenever Nerdred seems to use Flippy. Pretty, it pretty much works out for them most of the time, so I think uh, you know that's what people are seeing. That was the added benefit as well. Flippy with Snipe's MSI I had to play Scout or Tony, off I guess, classing. later on. Later on, yeah, or so, yeah, whatever. of course. Maybe Zebesai should get off through the season because he's uh, <laughs> you know, every, class. Played, every class is an off class for Zebesai. All right, uh, Sonny, tell us, or did I ask everyone? Did I ask you, Zebo? I did, yeah, yeah. Uh, Sonny, tell us the results. Um, uh, since there's no third place, I guess I go straight to the winner. And the winner is with 60% Flippy. You can do the maths for Forsaken. <laughs> 32. Was that right? Not quite. Oh, bugger. Oh, it's this abacus. I swear to God, why do I even use it? <laughs> So yeah, Flippy gets another off class for the season award. He's won definitely won it a couple of times before, right? He didn't win last season. Last season Forsaken took it away from him. But the season before he won and the season before that that's tech one, I think. I like but this back got, and forth then. That's his fourth off class award, I think. And one Prem best Prem debut at some point. Don't get me wrong, Flippy is incredible, but Forsaken was absolutely beastly. Like, even uh, just the Frag movies, man, of the last season, and the season before that, ever since Forsaken showed up in that game that Cadis was randomly, randomly casting in the season 20 preseason, Forsaken has been tolling on Sniper, and then his impact this season in 425, I think he was robbed. I think he was robbed for this award, but I'm not going to talk about it. We've already had so many delays tonight with the fucking mumble bullshit. Let us jump ahead to... Wanna go debut or best player in the season? Go debut. Should save that one for last. Sunday There's Black. also cast of the season. But oh, that's, that's gonna be the, the end one. Yeah. Sideshow's big parade. <laughs> Let's go for the uh, Premier Division debut of the season, please, Sunny Bike. Uh, <clears throat> the nominees were Spot with 41%, Serotone with 30%, Scrap with 11%, Kuna with 9%, and Lupus, Dem Easy, and Ale got 2%. Those, uh, the last three didn't, didn't make it in. I'm pretty sure I went for Spud in the nomination and the vote. Just remember casting some of the games and being really impressed with them and Cadis was gushing as well. He really loved Spud, so that really sold it to me as well. What about you, Saicho? Um I was debating between Serotonin and Spud for quite a while. Eventually I think I gave it to Spud because um even though Serotonin stepped it up and he was playing right at the top, I think uh yeah, I was just overall really impressed by Spud's play. Kratos, former demo man of the season. 
Um, I was nominating Spot or Scrap, I can't remember. Because I guess they would both deserve it, but I knew people would go for Spot, so I voted for him in the end. But Scrap would have deserved it as well. Oh, you uh, had to show some favoritism amongst your teammates there? Yeah, you know, like, I don't know, they both deserve it more than uh, Seroton, to be honest. Even if Seroton did play a great season, but I guess it's much harder to, like, get into Prem as a demo or, as, like, a scout. Especially, like, the aggressive scout, for example. Like, he has to do so many plays alone without, like, dying at random points and all the stuff. Like, it's, I guess it's pretty hard. Like, I realized it last season. <laughs> and I did have all of the heals. And, yeah, it's pretty hard as a scout to, like, just step into Prem and, like, we really we did play against the like very top teams as well, and he did didn't choke in these games, I guess. It's much so, more punishing. But you backed uh, your demo man, Spud. Yeah, I voted for Spud. Zebo, who did you nominate and vote for? Serotone uh, for both, but I only played dogs twice the whole season, so that's all I have to go on. Kind of roll them both times, so I didn't see much of Spud, but I don't. Understand why it would go any other way than Terratone. He played in a top top team and he was really good on medic, so. And he also calls. That's true. I remember hearing their team comms at the start of the season and being impressed. Uh, I've made a horrible mistake. Cadis, who did you nominate slash vote for? Uh, I nominated. Uh, I don't know who I voted. I can't, can't remember who I voted. I tend to like vote bias and nominate like legit, you know? So I might have voted so, yeah. for Spud. I can't remember. But I nominated Serotone. Um, I was really torn um, between these two. I mean, the thing that kind of separated in the end was like, kind of like Zebo said, Serotone went straight into a top team and just gave a completely like accomplished, like mature performance for the almost the entire season. Like the finals were a bit iffy, but. Well, the regular season, you know, which is the equivalent of what Spud played anyway. I think Serotonin was just, you know, he was the top medic, whereas Spud was like a really, really impressive kind of breakthrough act of the season. Uh, Spud is like a player who in next season, maybe the season after, sometime in the next six months, he's going to break through completely and be giving like these like top demo performances in a season. But for this season, it was just like, it was a really good first season, you know, a really, really good performance. Mm -hmm. but Serotonin was like, straight in at like the number one number two medic in the, in europe so you know that clinched it for me yeah you really didn't look out of place there and i know when seasons gone by i always voted for the debut who actually you know finished highest in the table but spud i don't know you've won my heart Amps, you're gonna be back in serotonin right I went with Spud, actually. He was, <laughs> he was really sick. Get slammed. Get absolutely I, body I, I think serotonin. both Zero and Spud really deserve it. And Zero, from my little uh, experience of like, playing with medics, or the little amount of medics that I've played with, he was definitely the best. But, uh, Spud Are you calling was, out like... Tucson? <laughs> it's Are you calling out Zebesai? <laughs> oh, Fun yeah, really man. Insane. I guess he played with me as well. Thanks. Oh, wow. Thanks. You're insulting everyone here, Ants. Yeah. <laughs> Great work. I love that. Anyone else? I didn't ask you. I'm totally losing. Zebo, I'd asked you already. Forget it. Results, please, Sonny Black. In fourth place with 13.9% is Scrap. In third place with 22.6% is Kuna. And in first place with 36% is Serotone, which leaves Spot on second place with 26%. I guess that's fair for the reasons discussed. And it's kind of surprising that a medic would win that award because, you know, medics don't get any love generally. Easy road to high divs, isn't it? Admirable. That's the only exactly. reason you're in prom. Exactly. Work. Me, I mean, the, my uh, the skill level a soldier since the last time you were in prem. I'll have you know, I made my debut in the top division as soldier Saicho. Suck it! They didn't even have gunboats back then. Uh, any thoughts on the, that result? We haven't yet aired. Anyone want to make a case for Scrab or Kuna? Anyone want to make a case for Kuna as player of the season, debut of the season? He beat his team out excellently. He made some sick air pipes. Just to go back to the serotonin thing quickly, I think it, it's really telling that 
like you said, you normally don't get like medics nominated for this because normally like a medic in a top team, if he's not at that level, he's the first guy to like get thrown under the bus, you know? Mm -hmm. Like medics, when you're making a lot of mistakes, like you just, it's so obvious and you just get torched for it. Whereas like, yeah. So I think that's kind of the most telling thing about it. I just want to relate this beautiful sentiment from Twitch chat. A well-spoken man says, it's a little quiet smiley face there. Dear person in the chat, you are beautiful. Whatever is going on in your life right now, please know that you matter and your story is important. You are loved. <laughs> Take a moment to reflect on that before we move to the player of the season award, Sonny Black. Uh, <clears throat> uh, that really got you, Sonny. That really struck a chord with that. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Nominees cool. for best player the Ah there. Stark with 26%, Mike with 16%, Nox 14%, Zebuza with 11%, and the ones that didn't make it in Chucky with 7, Captain with 4, Tech with 4, uh, Shadowburn, Death, Lupus, Cadis, and His with 2. Straight out the gate. I voted for Tony the Tiger and I nominated him to Saicho. Hello, Saicho. Hello. You can see him in his camera looking. He's there. <laughs> He's not talking. Right. He's just looking stupid. He's smiling. Stop fucking around. You're all <laughs> Who did you I can't. Vote for? I can't hear a word anyone's saying. I've got like a thousand ping. It, the internet <laughs> here is just dreadful. Uh, hello, am I alive? Yeah. Who we did hear you vote to nominate for? All right, you hear me loud and clear. All right, yeah. excellent. Everything's just gonna come through a second later, I think. Uh, who did I vote to nominate for? Um, I can't even remember. I think it was Stark, but I don't know. I didn't know who to pick this one. I didn't think it was anybody who came to mind. It is. Um, I nominated and probably voted for Stark, but it really was like a matter of, of impact. I think if I, was to be, if I was being completely honest, I think two or maybe even three of the best players this season were in reason, but because they were all together, it just came across as this like accomplished team performance. So like mm. Stark was the most like impressive solo performance of the season, but I think there there were better players this season. But the who were those three in reason? The who would be there? They were uh, Mike, Knox, and the captain. Um, I find it weird that the Sideshow and Cadiz, both of you nominated Huffy for Scout of the season, but you give Stark best player of the season. No, I nominated Stark. I said that before. I said I might have voted for Huffy because I tend to vote bias, you know. I nominate a clean, legit, my actual opinion, and then I vote with my personal biases, you know. Oh. I think I've, I voted for Happy, but I nominated yeah, Stark. It was both. just me that was a hypocritical retard. So, <laughs> um, I, yeah, I voted Stark because he had the biggest impact on his team. Like, yeah. I don't know. My justification for this was poor at best. I really didn't know who to vote for. Sebo, what were your thoughts? I didn't uh, vote on this one. <laughs> Why? Because of the reasons before I was in it. Right? Yo, you don't want to vote for yourself. You also don't want to give everyone else uh, a little push up the rankings. So. I made it a rule. Because people have to uh, told me that You're I'm the ego You're side. Switzerland, okay. So I made it a rule that I won't vote in the <laughs> ego votes I'm in. It pains you. It clearly pains you not to vote for yourself. Just do it, man. Just pull the trigger. It's too late now. I'm... What was your thoughts on the Player of the Season award? Um, I went with Nox, I think. I wasn't really sure who would vote for here, to be honest. I feel like it's a bit hard to rate who's the best player in the season. I don't think... I, to be honest, I don't think that should be a vote. It's because it's so, like... It, well, maybe you get what I mean. I'm not going to find the words for it, even if I tried. I went with Nox in the end. It's kind of conflicted this season because of the fact that these three incredible players, or I don't know, the reasons roster upgrades came so late in the season, like, 
obviously Mike and Dogs are incredible, but like, uh, I didn't feel inclined to vote towards them. Tony the Tiger, he put in a solid performance. He kind of built that team. Is 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 he actually the captain of Nerd Rage, or is it him and Zebasai together? Whatever. Uh, he put this team together. He was a big part of their success, even if they seemed to flounder in the end. But they were coming up against a super team. Hmm, I don't know. Kratos, your thoughts? Uh, I nominated the Bozai, and I voted for him as well. Because, like, I don't know, he was, like, playing um, multiple classes and, like, was, like, very dynamic and, like, just switched to scout. And it was needed when they had Flippy on Cypher and all those stuff. And, I don't know. I guess he deserves it. What do you think of your performance this season, Zebasai? Was it worthy of player of the season? I think, uh, I don't know, my roamer uh, isn't that strong. I think I've gotten like better at roamer towards the end of the season. Like playoffs, I felt I did good. But uh, as roamer, no. How much so do you know how the maps were split? Like how many you played on each? Like, or roughly? Uh, I think I only played like... I looked at John's stats and I played 60 minutes of scout uh, over the whole season. And I off-classed a bunch of scout. So I don't think I played any official maps as scout. Are you sure? Because you had a lot of like 10 minute games, right, at the start? Uh, yeah, I might have, but I don't think so. Like, I don't uh, remember a single one at least. Hmm. I guess you played Scout against us. Yeah, I no, remember. I played uh, Roamer versus you guys. But oh, I off class yeah. a bunch to Scout. Because Flippy Gold uh, Sniper. So I still had an hour overall. Who uh, who were the nominees again, say, um, Sunny Black? Uh, all of them, or only the Just, ones uh, that make. The, the guys that okay. made the cut. Stark, Mike, Nox, Sebuzai. That's fair. Uh, t- tell us the results then. <clears throat> In fourth place with 19% is Nox. In third place with 23% is Sebuzai. And <laughs> the winner is Mike with 29% with Stark <laughs> in second place with 27%. That's only the second time that the best play, uh, that the player that won best player didn't win his class award. What was it last time? Uh, in season 17 when Nox won best player and Merlin won best league. Ah, uh, right. Yeah, that, At least that, that one time it makes sense. sense though. This time it just doesn't make any <laughs> sense whatsoever. Like, no, like, I mean, the Russian community will all vote for Shadowburn and he wasn't in this one, so now it's more fair, I guess. More fair, as in you mean still just a popularity contest and no one knows who the hell they're voting for. Oh, I'm very is surprised the best that player Nox came for. popularity contest, not based on nationality though. My, I don't know, Mike is the best player. Like, it's unfair because he, he didn't play the full season, but he is he, the best player. He's the best player, but... He had all of Wales behind him voting. It's a farce. He's not the... He didn't play the whole season, yeah? It's ridiculous. Sonny Black changed the rules. He played eight maps, like... <laughs> that's like okay. four matches. It's like over half a regular season. Like, I think if you had a cutoff point, it would be half a regular season, right? They played that. That's kind of lame, but I think even if you had a rule, they would qualify. I'm just anti Mike, okay? I'm biased, I've been exposed. Uh, interestingly, like looking at the ETFTL vote page, those two last awards, debut and player of the season, are the ones that get the least votes. Marginally. Why is player that something like that? gets the least. Yeah, it's second in terms of total votes. Second to last, I mean. I guess it's harder to decide because there is no direct comparison. They're at the bottom, you know. The but like, you scroll. Just, you're going through a fucking list, a form. Like, you're gonna f- just take the things. Some of them, I'm not sure about. I yeah, just... who are these people who go through and just leave like a few? Should, Obviously, just pick Zebusai anyone. doesn't vote for ones he's nominated, and we can. He's got his little rule there, but. Well, there but Rome is still the most in. popular one. Is it just people are really salty and they're like, "I'm not gonna vote for anyone as debut. These guys all suck." Or what the fuck? And that, bizarrely, Caster of the Season is the most voted award. Oh, yeah. There's a thousand votes there. For yeah, that, and because the Admirable's been behind. rallying his boys and making sure <laughs> that the entirety of Ireland votes for him and keeps him in. <laughs> oh, are you nervous, Aicho? What oh, have I done? In the bed. I've promoted it all over the place, man. Vote for Aicho. Uh, that makes so- it so much worse when you win. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 
Let us discuss the award everyone's been waiting for. It's the only one left, right? Best caster of the season, season 21. Who were the nominees? The nominees were uh, Sideshow, Admirable, TurboTaps, Samski, Molesto, Twiggy, Cadiz, Kratos, uh, Ryushi, War, and Gex. I honestly think, in my heart of hearts, Sideshow, you were the caster of the season. You had the the most viewers, the best hype moments, you cast the biggest games. Uh, if you haven't won it, it is a travesty. But uh, let's hear who the people voted for then. I voted for Saicho. I nominated Saicho. Well, there is no nominations, but Saicho, did you vote for yourself, buddy? No, I didn't vote for myself. I'm not going to stoop to the levels. I uh, I was split between Cadiz and Gex. I think Gex is the most professional cast that we have at the moment, and I really enjoy listening to him. Like um, His play-by-play is just brilliant. It's kind of like... Uh, it's kind of a, a bit on another level to what we what we in TF2, and I really enjoy listening to it. But my favourite casters are, are always the prem analysis people. So in the end, I voted for Cadus. Zeb, I uh, I voted for Sideshow, not only because you didn't cost as many games season, but I feel uh, Sideshow has really, really improved his costing this season compared to how it used to be. It's way, way better. Now. <laughs> But not that it was be bad shit, before, but now it's like, it's better than that, Marbles. Saicho's face is frozen there on Skype. I think he's dropped. Are you with us, Saicho? <laughs> just about. The ping is uh, going to make it difficult. I'm going to end up just cutting out as soon as you announce it, and I'm going to be stuck here for a week without any internet, not knowing what's going on. Let's keep it moving then, Kratos. Your vote for caster of the season. Um, I can't remember. It was either Saicho or Modesto. Jason Allen. <laughs> oh, sorry. I muted and then I muted. Um, I voted for Saicho, I think. Um, because he casted a lot, basically. I think without Saicho casting this season, it would have been pretty shit to watch. Because there would have been no, like, quality caster actually filling in. And he wasn't there. We owe him quite a lot, so let's just throw him a bone this once. Get back to normality next season. He did cast the most games. 11. I was second on 8. Then Samski on 6. Molesto on 5. Trotaz on 6 as well. We had some uh, really good new casters this season, Saicho. It was... Um, I don't know why I'm talking to you, God. I using ping. You got, you want to comment on yeah, that? I can't hear a thing. I don't know what you're <laughs> okay. talking about. I heard um, something about... <laughs> um, who did you vote for? Can't hear Amsi there. He's just like white noise. Hello? Hello? <laughs> I said I vote for you. Yes, fuck Yes. Yes. How many games did you play season, Edmar? Me? I, I cast it. Yeah. Oh, I, I cast all my games. Yeah, Marvel cast season. quite a lot at the beginning of the yeah, season. That's yeah. Super I nice. didn't cast very many at all. I was playing uh, officials or whatever with the high team that I was playing with. And then uh, I decided to tell them to jump on a dick for the end of the season because I needed to get back into it. Yeah, I felt like into you cast it way more than like only three more in the end. But, yeah. I wanted to make it as easy as possible for say to to get a slam dunk of an award. Sonny Black, did you cast a vote in that? Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> would have to look it up myself. You would Just have voted for me though, because of Germans. Yeah, Thanks. surely not. <laughs> I need to know who you voted for, Sonny. Just go to the fucking news post. This is important to me, Sonny. If you didn't vote for me, I love here. Oh, it's just gonna be I think, yeah, yeah, I think I watered the marble out of a habit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sonny. That's all. I'm, I'm happy. All right then. Uh, let us reveal the results. Okay. Let's see how many casters are there. Ten. Eleven. <clears throat> In eleventh and last place. Kratos. Is Ryoshi. And in tenth. Place is Turbo Taps. 
Um, wait, 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 can I ask what percentage of the votes that we <laughs> yeah, yeah, got? Percent. Because Rayoshi got 0.7% of all votes, and Tabutaps got 1%. Not uh, bad, he's uh, back yeah, up to I one. I want to say something Big to that, because I, I looked up the, the post results for, for those two, and Rayoshi dropped from 4.4% to 2.8% to 2.1% to 1.8% to 0.7% now. And TurboTaps dropped from 1.7% to 1.2% to 1% to 1% now. TurboTaps, you need to reevaluate what you're doing with your life, mate. <laughs> Ratio they cast like three games, I think. Yeah, three. Uh, uh, yeah, keep going, Sonny. Sorry. In uh, ninth place, is that? In ninth place, we have Kratos with 2.1%. Awesome, in eighth eighth place we have Twiggy with two point three percent. In seventh place we have Semsky with two point nine percent. In sixth place hello? we have Hello? Hello? I didn't hear I can that. still have good Samsky. on Marvel. Samsky? Do you hear Samsky? Should I... Samsky got two point nine percent. I just, you cut out for me at that point. Keep going, man. <laughs> in sixth place, we have Molesto with 3.1%. In fifth place, it's Gex with 4.4%. In fourth place, it's Cadiz with 4.7%. In third place. Oh, look at Saito biting his lip. <laughs> in third place, it's uh, War with 7.1%. <clears throat> Who the fuck votes for War? Jesus Christ. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. <laughs> In first place with fifty point seven percent. You little shit. Is Sitro. <laughs> but my book was twenty one percent. Twenty one to what? Fifty? Jesus, that's a landslide, man. Gonna have to step it up for season twenty two. Saito, have you got your speech prepared? <laughs> <laughs> I guess he smashed his headset and... He's, got off the t- no. he's, he's run off to tell his mum. <laughs> mum, mum, get the camera! <laughs> yeah, I'm so surprised the results there. Molesto beats out Samsky. The Irish popularity running strong there. Those were the two uh, hot new casters this season. I look forward to hearing more from them. I think Gex was too- way too low down. He only cast uh, the last three games, though. Casted the same amount as me, I think, and he's definitely better than I am. Nah, uh, I mean, he casted different- two and a half games because I uh, only ca- uh, counted the last one half or something because he had to go. Saito? Saito? <laughs> Saito? Uh, is he even, is oh, he's mumble. not in Mumble, he needs moving in. <laughs> he disconnected from Mumble in his victory lap. John. John. John's AFK. Can what? I do it? I don't have the power. Oh my god. Oh, there he is. No, John's not on the channel. What's this all about? <laughs> Saito, can you hear us? Yeah, I caused irreparable damage to my uh, laptop and um, <laughs> <laughs> disconnected myself from the Mumble server somehow just by kind of slamming my headset down. You smashed it, Saito. What did you say it was, Sonny? 50%? Yep, 50.7. Uh, to 20. What did I have? 25? 21. 21. Oh. Violate it, say to dominate it. <laughs> what would you like me to do? This will be my first job as your bitch. Uh, you can come to I 55 so that I can stay at home. Nah, mate, you've got that. Uh, under lockdown, so uh, your state stand say to you know, the fans they voted for you in their droves. The most popular vote people came out over 500 people voted for you, say to what do you have to say to them? Uh, 
thank you. Now you can all go watch my stream and not watch me cast, and then I can actually, you know, make something out of this and not just uh, help line Enigma's pockets or admirables. Actually. That's that's where the money goes. To be perfectly honest, like. I have to pay 20 to 30 pounds every time I want to cast a game to Admirable. It's called the Potato Tax. And <laughs> it's the main source of Ireland's income. I, I don't want to do it anymore. I, I want to leave, but I can't. He has l links with the Mafia, and I just can't get out. Three days a week availability, or else you have to pay me $5. I believe. It's the current system. <laughs> Uh, let us. What else is on the agenda? Actually, congratulations to Seicho, worthy winner. Anyone uh, want to wish well to Seicho? Now's your chance. When I figure out what we need to talk about, are we perhaps talking about I fifty five seating arrangement or something? Or? Oh, I wanted to. Um, I wanted to. This was still on the subject of the award show. I wanted to take a moment. For the unsung heroes, every every time we have an award show, we say, "Why isn't there an award for such and such camera, etc?" But a shout out to all our cameramen this season. Uh, John, who's hosting the show, cast the most games. David the Win was close behind him. On Kaya as well, made his debut on camera. We had Sue and even Marbler did a game for us. So respect to those guys. But as well as that, we had some other cool stuff coming up this season you were a fan of fantasy tf right Saicho? gentleman john i loved it just... we need an award uh, yeah a gentleman john it, award like the Knox need, award yeah we need an award for uh, um, biggest contributor to the team fortress scene or something but the public wouldn't be able to vote on it because they don't know what goes on behind the scenes you know behind the curtains what behind these be very curtains is where gentleman john lived <laughs> But yeah, like the Fantasy TF2. It was only this season, right? It wasn't around last season. Yeah, it was uh, new for this season and uh, the ECA season. Like, I fucking let my teens all day. But Seicho was a big fan. Was anyone else infatuated by Fantasy TF2? Do you keep uh, up to date with it throughout the seasons? No, I started off, but it ended the same as all my Fantasy Football Dreams, where I go hardcore mode the first week and then do shit and abandon it. But it's fun though. I just Here's don't like losing. I'm curious uh, how many of you Prem players actually vote on Saloon or gamble on Saloon.tf? Lose oh, all my keys on reason every time and then they get good and the site breaks so I can't bet on them. <laughs> 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 it's just, it's unbelievable. Like, for some reason, uh, the last, like, five games or something that I was going to earn mad, mad moolah on, the science just refused to let me work it. I, I don't understand what the deal is, but the playoffs, I would have been rolling in that refined. I'd have been able to build um, a second person out of that refined metal. I uh, also wanted to give some credit to Cherry there, like Saloon.tf seemed to be an integral part of making this season pretty awesome. I haven't actually placed a bet yet, you know, I've got too much integrity. I like the Sideshow guy, can't believe he won Caster this season. But then there's always the, the usual suspects that who we rely on so heavily, Ari, Zub, Anakin, even F2 still hammering out the plugins. Peter. So, I really want to acknowledge those guys. Yeah, Beater as well. He's just like so dedicated. Every season he has the movies. The Legacy series was incredible leading up to A52. Uh, is, are anyone else even making movies these days? Um, when was the last time you made a movie? The one I made for C, I think. He did ask what, me what's happening for, with the ones for the TLF one. fundraiser? Um, I have all of the guys at it. And I think they're all like gathering frags at the moment. Oh, I actually... am gathering frags so hard as... <laughs> they haven't actually sent me anything yet, but I got them all at it, and it's gonna happen. Got to shout out to the etf 2 admins as well. I don't think there are many 6v6 admins left. Is it just a Highlander League now, Sonny Black? Well, there's only one 6v6 admin that matters. Permzilla. Is that per per Permzilla? <laughs> That's not Permzilla. No. Yeah, we still have 6v6 admins. 
and we recently got a new one, a uh, new trail in as well, because there's too many Highlander admins. Did you get Coleman back? Is Coleman <laughs> going to be the next <laughs> no. big admin? He he was putting in a lot of work. Yeah. I think we need an admin of the season award as well. Uh, Shout we to Valve. Th- I want to give Valve some credit. They've shown up with this big balance patch, although we probably won't see mm, many of the fruits of that labour until season 22 when we're feeling a bit more adventurous with unlocks and stuff. Uh, that could segue nicely here, Sideshow, into A55. Are we going to have the Medigan pickup mechanic still banned for LAN? I have no idea. I don't know. I guess it's on Nymphia to decide. Um, in my opinion, it would be an odd decision to ban it if it gets all the way to I-55 and Valve has banned change in, anything. Is it banned in the ESCA playoffs right now? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It, it's banned in every every league at the moment. As far as I know, I don't think there's any way that allows it. But I think, the, I think that's mainly because A, players don't like it. B, the biggest reason is because I think people kind of think that Valve are going to change it so it doesn't make sense to like mess about with it when it when it hasn't been that way for the whole of the season. But I think if it lasts all the way until I-55 and they haven't changed anything about it, we should just start manning up and playing with it. You're uh, organising a little tournament between now and then, Sideshow. Have you given any thought to if you're going to ban it? I'll be running the same rule set as I-55 um, if, if there isn't um, anything confirmed at that point, then I'll be allowing but, it. Like seeing as we're so uncertain if it's gonna stay that way, I really think it should be banned because we want but why? the teams to why be do able to think prepare it's as good, uh, like as possible for the land, and not knowing if we can pick up Ubers or not. It's uh, like a huge change. But um, what, the only indication that you, that it's uncertain is that. Um, the players think it it is because it's bad. Like, there's no indication given from Valve that they're going to be changing it. In fact, they deliberately changed it this way. Like, like, very deliberately changed it because they wanted it to be this way. Like, I think it might be a bit of a an optimistic feeling that it's oh, it'll definitely be changed. And Valve's are going to Valve going to change it. I think people would really have to start emailing them and saying this is shit. We want it changed. If if they were to make any decisions Wait, to change uh, it. Why don't you allow it in the the big invite cup that we're hinting at here? I it's mentioned two in the weeks last episode. Before I-55. But if it's really bad and it has a detrimental impact on the, we can say to Valve, look at these games; they were ruined because of this. I'd love an update to come out three days before I-55 and cripple the entire event, <laughs> thanks to <laughs> us trying to fix this Medigan thing. Like every time they fix something, they they break it, and it takes them a while to get around to fix. In fact, is the quickie bomb launcher actually more powerful when you charge stickies now? Has yeah, that ever been done? It's still shit though. Well, it's oh, not right. shit, but it's not not really any more viable than it was before. Like, ah, you couldn't you couldn't test it for like a week because of the broken stickies. But like I went and played with it a little bit, but like I can't remember the numbers. But like the most damage I got with a long range sticky was like. I don't know, it was like a negligible difference because it already has the damage nerf overall, and then the little buff you get for the long range stickies wasn't really enough to justify it, especially when you take into account that like, these were fully charged stickies I was doing, like a cross walkway and you never fully charge a, a regular sticky, you pretty much never fully charge, let alone the quickie bomb launcher that charges twice as fast, you never get the full like damage boost from it, and when you do, it's like 10 damage more than you would get oh, a really? regular sticky. That's so, terrible. Like, it's like, I couldn't even I don't know what the numbers were before, so it was really hard to tell, but it was like, instant impression was like, nah, Uh-oh. this is pointless. Uh-oh. Is it is there an, uh, for a reason? Or are you... Oh, I can't, I can't hear anyone. No, oh, I can I hear you. Sorry. Whatever <laughs> 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 you were saying, I didn't hear. I think we just, uh, yeah, I've so is the general one. consensus that people don't like this change? I think, Nobody's um, tried it. Like, really? In our serious competition? And I'm just saying that because I don't have to play. I want to see everyone fucking suffer. We played it for a few yeah. days. We didn't really use it, but we played teams that were using it. And it had only really negative impacts on the game. I got a little bit uh, from David the Win here. He's saying it in our A55 general channel. It is allowed for now, but subject to change if updated. 
he says, he spoke to Nimte about it the other day, and there will be no gentleman's agreement allowed. How can they actually enforce that? Like, if you just don't pick it up. Either way, like, it needs to be announced soon, whether we're going to use it or not, so we can practice properly. And hope they don't change it as if it is allowed. I think it's really delusional to use it at the moment. Yeah, I don't think we should use it at all, but the people that are watching want us to use it, so... Guess what, guys? You're going to get your chance to discuss this at length on Thursday. We're going to have a A55 fully charged Europe episode, really just focusing on the details, the specifics of the production, the tournament itself and the event. And we're going to have Nymthe on there, our loyal TF2 tournament admin. We'll have Dasher and maybe Mana as well. So we're asking you to throw your questions onto the event thread as well. We'll do a little bit of Q&A. We'll try and uh, see if you can come up with any good questions. I'll put it in Twitch chat right now. Head over to teamfortress.tv. You can see it on schedule there. So if you have any interesting questions. I'm not really interested about teams for this one. We've already talked that to death about who's going to win and whatever. I'm sure we'll do one nearer the time, but just specifically stuff about the event. There's been loads of stuff going on, like with the thousand tickets being released and then details of where the TF2 stage is going to be in this tent and stuff. You want to talk a bit about that, Sideshow, or do you want to save it for Thursday? I think we should save the majority of it, but uh, just a little public services announcement for anyone who hasn't been keeping up with it. There is this tent outside in the car park and it's where the whole TF2 event is going to be. So if you've if you've bought your tickets and you're picking your seats, in fact, if you haven't bought your tickets and you thought that they, like, they'd run out or something, go buy your tickets now um, before they do actually run out because they released another thousand and put them in the tent. So you want to be trying to find some space in the tent. That's where the whole TF2 community is going to be. That's where the production is going to be. That's where the top teams are going to be, the stage, etc., etc. So, uh, yeah, make sure you get onto that because you need to start doing it now because if... if uh, if you allow the tickets to run out or seats to run out or something, then you really have wasted the, the chance that Multiplayer have, have given us to get this event back on track. Well said, that man. And yeah, like this episode has gone on for an hour and a half. The, the, the award show is always incredibly long. I'm prepared to wrap things up. Has anyone else got a burning issue they want to get off their chest? I have something. Uh, my team, Nerd Rage. Uh, we need a monitor for LAN, and we're all set. So if anyone out there has a spare 120Hz monitor that they're bringing to LAN, please add me and, uh, so we can talk about it. Is that Thank including you. the two that I'm giving you? Uh, yeah, we need one. We got f uh, five, yeah, at the moment. Should we give it to Captain instead? That's all I have. You need one too, Kenneth? Uh, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. There's fucking four oh, weeks to go, five weeks to go. You've literally, you've turned into Epsilon. This reason, Keen, to, you've just turned into this Epsilon team that's going to turn up late to everything, not organise anything, and just kind of dribble up to the event and be like, oh wait, we don't have PCs. Well, no, like, everything is sorted, apart from, like, maybe a monitor or something. I don't really know. But it's like, you know, worst case scenario, we just tell him to man up and fucking take it in his flight. You know, so it's like, that's the worst case. But the better case is he doesn't have to potentially break his monitor, you know? And Nerd Rage ended Start up with that means. Don't let your mum pack it. <laughs> uh, let me just remind everyone then. Like I said, fully charged on Thursday. There's ESEA game tonight. Um, $5 Club versus Street Hoops Esports starting in about three hours time, I think. Uh... Let me see. Three hours and 48 minutes from now. Saito, when is the uh, the comp happening? Or what's your preliminary schedule for that? Invite uh, event? It is. Let me just check the dates in August. I didn't know it. 15th and 16th of August. I need to announce that really soon, but <clears throat> I'm at home at the moment for a week and my uh, uni accommodation doesn't have internet, so I'm going to find that a little difficult, but I will be trying to get that out as soon as possible. I think we mentioned it in the previous episode, but a big uh, eight-team invite cup, but also featuring not just the best in Europe, but 4G. Froyutech going to be there, right? Yeah, Froyutech have decided they are interested, or at least uh, they might need a Merc or, or yeah. The 
they're going to be playing. They're going to be playing with Euro pings as well, which is going to be a pity. But yes, we're going to see Free Tech there uh, showing it off. All right, let's wrap it up then. Congratulations to everyone that won an award. Commiserations to all those who finished second place. <laughs> uh, time for the shout outs. Let's go straight in with Zebasai. Uh, shout out to Knudson, Nordridge, and Beater. Sunny Black. Uh, shout out to Ips, Sam, Merlin, before I forget. And the ET of Trail stuff. Merlin takes the shout outs very seriously. <laughs> Lucky you got that in there, mate. <laughs> what about uh, AMS, Amps? Shout out to my team. Shout out to uh, the last resort. Um, a shout out to Sil. Kratos. Shout out to my team. I'm sorry that I'm not around that often at the moment. Will be better. I'm looking forward to for the LAN. And shout out to Verse. Happy birthday, Verse. Keto. I'm, I'm sure there's. I'm sure you say happy birthday every time you're on stream. Are you? Do you just like stalk people's birthdays, <laughs> or does Verse have a birthday every day? Or what's going on here? Yeah, every day is a uh, birth, uh, birth, birthday. <laughs> Just had a million dollar idea. Birthdays.tf. All the upcoming birthdays of TFT players. <laughs> 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 we'll get Gentleman John on it. Kiris, who do you want to show you? Uh, shout out to my team and to uh, everyone that's going to land. going to be fun. I'll not take my show out now and I'll leave it up for the cast of the season that goes to show out. But I'll shout out to everyone involved with Team Fortress TV this season. We managed to cast every Premiership game again, two seasons in a row. And that's all thanks to my draconian rule and Oh yeah, do we get an award? Aggressive for that, fans. Sonny? We need another award, please, Sonny. We can but, add a times two at the end. <laughs> times two. <laughs> I've really been impressed by uh, people stepping up again this season. And the new casters and stuff. Anyone who wants to cast, you know. Just drop me a line. I'll let anyone cast. I'll let Torek cast. I'll let Lulu cast. Anyone can cast. Next yeah, season, though. That's Next the season. reason why you didn't get an award. <laughs> now I remember. Say, Cho, take it away, oh, buddy. Uh, shout out to Admirable. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, shout out to the people who do production behind the scenes for Team Fortress TV as well. We've already mentioned some of the names, but. Uh, very helpful and they do get the spotlight so um, shout out to those guys so yeah, uh, some action tonight with ESEA if you want to tune into Team Fortress TV in three hours or so for some uh, playoff action between Five Dog Club and Street Hoops but for now, this is European Team Fortress TV signing off with the Fully Charged Awards show, good night